For today's data science talk, I want to change gears and talk about things from the perspective of a consumer of a data science project. Now, what I want to say is, as a consumer of a data science project, you're going to find that accuracy or hard classification rules don't meet your business needs. Now, you don't need me to tell you this. You will encounter this if you try to deploy an accurate classifier into your production stack and you'll eventually run into these problems that I'm going to describe simply so now you're preloaded with what will happen to you if you try to use a merely accurate classifier. Now I call this the accuracy fallacy. Now what drives, the, what drives it is often two things, operationalizing a machine learning model and imbalanced data science projects, which are among the most valuable. What we're going to do is just a simple Gedanken problem that we're trying to decide who to send marketing literature to in a low response rate world. So perhaps 1% of the population at all would respond to our marketing outreach, but maybe there's some subpopulations that our model can predict that might respond at a much higher rate, like 5%, which is still, on average, not responding. But it, again, is a more valuable subpopulation, and there might be enough profit in such a system to pursue such an activity. Now, if we restrict ourselves to a machine learning classification rule based on accuracy, we're stuck with the following fallacy. that if we summarize the behavior of that classifier on our data set, so we snoop the actual answer, like actually mail them out and see what happens, then we do a posterior or after study to say how well did that work, we would get that basically the convert, which is the truth, is either yes or no, and the prediction is either yes or no. Now the Perhaps we um, had a defective prediction that said nobody would convert, and we had a thousand instances in this data set, and accuracy is merely how much mass is in these two cells, the yes-yes cell and the no-no cell. So this is a 99% accurate classifier, which failed us miserably. It didn't send out or advise sending out any of the marketing literature. Whereas this one, we can imagine, convert, yes, no, predict, yes, no. Maybe this could have happened if we'd run a different classifier. This one is only 91% accurate. And it's very inaccurate when it predicts yes. When it predicts yes, 9 times out of 10, it's wrong. So conditionally, it's not that great. However, as a marketing tool, it's very great. It found one-tenth of the population that has all respondents. So it achieved perfect recall or sensitivity on one-tenth the population. So this one would give you all your business at one-tenth the marketing cost. So it's actually a very effective decision procedure. So you would prefer this one to this one. So it's not just that accuracy is irrelevant, it often points the wrong way for imbalanced classes. Now you can use an artificial metric called balanced accuracy, but that's actually quite dangerous because nobody will ever remember you said balanced accuracy, they'll requote it as accuracy, and you end up with a morass. Now, what is the metrics you should be using, or what are the metrics you should be using in this situation? I believe you should be insisting on the ROC curve. In particular, you want to know every trade-off of sensitivity and specificity. Sensitivity is what fraction of the people that would have responded did you pick up. So you want sensitivity at 1. Specificity is what fraction of the people that aren't going to respond did you leave alone. So you also want it near 1. It is usually the classifier you want is a scoring system 
not a classification rule. You want one that for any specification of specificity can tell you the best sensitivity you can achieve, or for any specification of sensitivity, the best specificity you can achieve. And that is usually summarized in the ROC curve. And that is this plot, where the x-axis is the false positive rate, or 1 minus specificity, and the y-axis is the true positive rate, or the sensitivity. We said we want the 1-1 one, one classifier. We want this. The diagonal line is useless, and our model score can achieve, if we have a model that returns a numeric score, we can achieve any sensitivity specificity trade-off on this curve, and this is the ROC curve. Receiver operating characteristic curve or plot. Now, the how do we change a model score into a decision procedure? Well, we just say if the score is above this, we think this is our best prospect. And that, that above this is called a threshold, and we can get different behaviors by doing different thresholds. And this is why, operationally, you always want a model that returns a score, not a decision. You want to reserve converting a score into a decision into your business logic. Now, the reason, operational way of thinking of this, or reason is, suppose you only have a budget to send out 100 mailers. And the model picks 90. What do you do? Do you only send out 90? Do you recruit 10 additional mailers from the subpopulation the model said not to send to? So that's why you don't want a hard decision model. So really what you want is for any positivity rate, specified, I want to send to 100 mailers, a model that's tailored to pick up that fraction of the population. So you don't want just one model, you want a whole sheath or stack of models, one for every situation. So you want to be operationally say, I would like 10 more marketing opportunities, I know they're not as good as the first 90, give me the next 10 in order of your score. You want one more thing than just a unorganized or unrelated sheath of different models for every positivity requirement. You want them to be coherent in that if this is the strict model that's picking a very small subset of the population, and this is a less strict model that's sending out more mailers, you want all the decisions that the less strict model makes to contain all the decisions the very strict model makes. You do not want reversals of decisions when you switch from model to model in your sheath. You want this, you do not want this. You want basically the models to all have a coherent story, that the more accepting models contain the less accepting models. So you don't really want a sheath of models. You in fact want a single model that returns a numeric score such that you at operational time can decide which level of acceptance do you want. You can basically the model score, with proposing different thresholds, mail to everybody above this model score, gives you this nested set of opportunities, or ranks your opportunities. And that's what you want operationally, so that if you say, I'm going to send out 100 mailers, you can take the top 100 by your rank or score. And then one more thing you can do, it's mathematically trivial to recalibrate such a model such that the score itself is an estimated probability. So you can actually, in addition to ranking all of your candidates, which is what you really want to do, because you might sweep from the good ones out, you also want the score to be a number that is in self, itself an estimated probability of conversion, so you know ahead of time, at least an estimate, be it right or be it wrong, of how many responses will come back from this mailing, because you'll know for each individual mailer what was the predicted probability of response, and that's an incredibly useful thing to have, and it costs no more than building a model that returns a score, then recalibrating that score. Very easy mathematical procedure to do. I mean, maybe you don't know how to do it offhand, but it's quite learnable. And what I'm arguing is you don't want a single model that returns a hard threshold because then you can't change how many responses you get. You want a sheath of models, one for every desiderata. However, you want that sheath to be coherent, each one contained in the other. So really all you want is one model that returns a numeric score that you can then pick your threshold later to say everything above this score is the ones I'm interested in because I think the model is ordering my prospects well. And that is why a highly accurate model is not enough. We want a scoring model, not a classification rule that returns only yes or no. We want numbers.
uh, from an operational point of view, they're much more valuable. They allow us to defer some important decisions into the operational or business logic layer of our business. Anyway, thank you very much for your time.